Do you remember uh, the first time you killed someone? Yeah. We weren't a family that carried guns or uh, any, any kind of uh, weapon for violence or anything, no. So we played war, stuff like that, but you know, it's never real. Well, then my dad and my mom, they told us it's like uh, to hurt people or kill or uh, never ever. You always learned that when someone died, it was, it was something that was detrimental. Someone felt it. Someone else needed that person in their lives. I grew up, you know, protected all my life. Even when I joined the military, you know, my guys treated me as a kid brother. I was protected. Have you ever killed anyone? And if so, what happened? Uh, which time? We were in a couple different villages on, in, uh, in Sarobi, uh, which is a, a city right next to uh, Sharbaran. We were going to the border of Albania to a town nearby. Uh, we set up claymores. They're bomb devices that you face. They have like 700 steel balls in them. We were ambushed. My bus was blown up. I was the only one up there that wasn't hurt. And Screen, scared to death, scared to death, really, 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 really scared. So I started asking and <laughs> screaming for help. Somebody get up here and help me. I'm alone. And then, then, then two little heads. As I took the first three steps, uh, I just was bounding up. Uh, basically, that's when the gunfire started. We, we gunned down these two guys uh, holding a, a larger machine gun, a PKM and uh, another guy holding his ammo. So they were just running from point A to point B. We happened to just gun them down. Um, and they were right next to a clot. A clot's a, uh, a house, uh, like a little mud hut. Um, and a lady came out. That one guy is as close to me because Iranian, they come, they come very close to us and they attack us at night. So we shoot everywhere. My head was ringing. Everything was in slow motion. And uh, there was a rifle on the ground that had gotten blown out of the bus. I picked it up and uh, ran towards the gunfire. I was down, and all I could see was his head and shoulders. He had a hard hat on, and then I saw the red emblem. It was definitely, it was. And then when, his, when I could see a silhouette, I blasted him. Silhouettes, they're not real people, they're just targets. You don't shoot women or, or children on the battlefield, but we were just so, we were just so into the moment. Uh, we watched her pick up the rifle and that was, well, the machine gun, and that was, uh, that was the cue. And we just lit her up and I remember just watching, you know, three, there was three of us and we just opened up and we just blood up against the wall. She just slumped over and it's like, all right, we got her. Well, we found um, a very young, Vietnamese person with his legs mostly gone. I come to him, I look to his face with the flashlights. He told me, just, just finish me, just finish. I, I don't want to live, so. so I kill him. A bunch of the guys had caught up to me and they're like, what did you do? And I'm like, what are you doing here? I thought I was dead. Uh, I didn't realize I was the only one that got off the bus. The whole situation is like almost an out-of-body experience where you're looking down on this situation. You know, like, I could have picked a bullet out of the air. Every second, every small little detail of that exact moment. I can tell you the, what the dust felt like, I, you know, how, how the air tasted on my breath. Every little detail you, you know, because that's the first time you've done something so big. If there's a hell, that's probably what it smells like there. It's it penetrates you and it just won't go away for a long time. It's horrible. Once you realize they're, they're gone, they're dead, then what death looks like is nothing. There's nothing there. There's a body there, but there's nothing at all there. One minute you have somebody walking along and the next there's just a, a lump of flesh. It goes from something, a big something, 
to the smallest nothing that there can be. It goes from dreams and aspirations to nothing. You know, you can kick it, you can hit it with a stick, you can throw rocks on it, you can do anything, and it won't bother it because it's dead. I know it's not right. It's not right to do this, but I have to. If I focus about all this stuff, in one minute, if I focus, I'm, I lose my mind. But I never focus about this stuff. I didn't feel any personal guilt. I just, I felt sorry for him. But no personal guilt, no. It was strange, you know, you could disassociate when you're, you're shooting at uh, spots in the jungle, but this guy was right there and I felt very compassionate and I was thinking about you know, his girlfriend, his family, whatever. I didn't give a fuck who he was. I was trying to keep me alive. I wasn't, it, it wasn't me and a Vietnamese. It was me and anybody that's got to get, any, it, I was, oh man, this is hard. When they find out that you served in Vietnam, do they ask you if you killed anyone? Yes. And what is normally your answer? I say, I'm not sure. I may have. Uh, outside of the Army, when is it okay to take someone's life? Do you want to go home and see your family? Hmm? Well, the question's back on you. Would you want to go home and see your family? Well, then I guess it's okay. I mean, the difference in war and in civilian life You got no choice on one, one of those. If they mean to do harm to myself or my family, I'll do anything I can to prevent them from doing it. If it means taking their life, fuck them. They've chosen their path. Outside of war, it's mostly never justified. But in war, neither side deserves to die, honestly. I mean, that guy over on that side is fighting for what he believes in, and you're fighting for what you believe in, and both have families and children, probably, and, you know. I think there are people that just, it's not that they don't deserve to live, it's well, it's not that they don't deserve to have been born, but maybe they don't deserve to go on living. There are, I, I do have that belief, that there comes a point when, you know, enough's enough from one person. Enough's enough. You, don't, you can't live in our world. That's just the way, you know, I, and, but the problem there is somebody Someone has to have the power to say that you can't do that. And now who, and then somebody has to give them that power. That's, it's all so confusing to, to me.